So, of course, a couple of days ago, we all found out the sad news that the legend himself, Bobby the Brain Heenan, had passed away at the age of, I believe, 73. And, you know, of course, there was a massive outpouring of love and affection for this legend of professional wrestling, this standard bearer of professional wrestling managing. And it was good to see. And... You know, I'm sure there have been all types of tributes, all types of podcast segments, all types of videos done about the subject. And I'm sure he has been done great justice by all of them. And you probably should check out as many of those as you possibly can. And I don't know what I'm going to add to the conversation that's going to be anything additional, <clears throat> anything better, anything new, fresh or different. But I wanted to make sure that I took a few moments to talk about the career and the legacy of this legend of professional wrestling, the weasel, Bobby the Brain Heenan. And I'll start off by saying this. So often we look for greatness, even when it's not there. We pretend that this is greatness. We want that to be greatness. We artificially prop and elevate a lot of things in our society to make them out to be bigger and larger than they actually are. But the real fact is, is so often greatness isn't fulfilled. Greatness isn't realized. It is often pretended, but very rarely ascended. But let me make this perfectly clear. In the grand scheme of the entire history of professional wrestling all around the world, there are even legends and some might call icons of the business that I don't know really transcended to that point of true greatness. Like the creme de la creme, the absolute best of the best. When you think about this, you think about this individual. When you think about that, you think about that individual. To where, when you think about professional wrestling, you might think of guys like Hogan, Austin, Rock, Flair, maybe Vince McMahon, you know, just to name a few. But ultimately, it's a very, very select fit list. There are very few true guys that get to that level and that platform. But I promise you, and I assure you, that when you think about the history of wrestling and you think about managers throughout the entirety of professional wrestling, the one gold standard, the ultimate measuring stick, the be-all, end-all, the one and only manager to achieve true greatness was Bobby the Brain Heenan. And that has nothing to do with getting caught up in the emotion of the moment of his passing. That has nothing to do with the moment of trying to artificially prop him up and pretend him to be something he's not. The simple fact of the matter is, is that's the simple fact. Is Bobby Heenan was, is, and always will be the gold standard, the ultimate measuring stick of professional wrestling managers, period. And as so often the case when we get into the talk about the best ever and the greatest and greatness and all of this, it's open for debate. It's open for discussion. You know, and it's like for me, I would say, you know, Hogan's the biggest star in the history of the business. Some people are going to point to a Flair or an Austin or a Rock. I might be convinced in the righteousness of my argument. Others will be convinced in the righteousness of theirs. And it's open for debate, even if we don't agree. To me, there is no debate about who the greatest manager of all time is. It's like, even when you think about other great managers over the years, the Jim Cornettes and the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart's, and so on, a lot of great managers over the years, they all look from the bottom of the mountain or halfway up the mountain to the summit where only one guy achieved true greatness. And that was, of course, Bobby the Brain Heenan. And, you know, to hear about his passing, it... On the one hand, it's, it's like, I hope his family finds peace in all of it. I hope that he was at peace at the very end. 
Because this is a guy that battled for many years with throat cancer, I believe tongue cancer as well. We all know how his face had kind of gotten deformed due to some of the surgery, the reconstructive jaw surgeries he had, the infection he had in the jaw, and what ultimately ended up happening. But like Bobby the Brain Heenan, and even with the falls at home and breaking his hip and breaking other bones, he would still go out there and hit the circuit every once in a while, talking about the fan conventions. He fought it to the very end. He tried to weasel away from death as long as he possibly could. And I commend the man for that. But ultimately, he met his maker. And I will say this. If there is a place up above, and I truly would like to believe that there is, I'll tell you what. When he walks through the pearly gates and right into the gorilla position, man, they got one hell of a manager and a commentator up there. If there's going to be some rapture, he, he, he can assemble a, quite a crew up there, and they'll come down and save us. I firmly believe that. But when I think about Bobby the Brain Heenan, I think about, you know, a guy who's darted off as a wrestler, and he was just kind of a guy, really honestly. I mean, he wasn't a big star. He wasn't a massive draw or anything like that. But he became the ultimate professional wrestling manager and so many people that he worked with over the years too many for me to even name in a one video the ultimate compliment i think you could pay to bobby the brain heenan in talking about his greatness as a manager and his impact on the business throughout so many years is that it seemed like everybody that was associated with him was better for it and got more over because of it and everybody that went against him was better for it and got over more for it. You know, the, the Bobby the Brain Heenan that relished being the bad guy, relished being the heel, relished being the villain, was willing to do whatever it took to get his guy over, to get the other guy over, to get himself over as a byproduct and get the story over. He would get in there occasionally and he would take bumps and he'd take some big bumps. He'd put on the weasel suit and make a clown out of himself. I mean, what more can you really say about it? But I, I think back on his career and there's like a couple of major arcs. And I think the first one is the Hulk Hogan arc, which is probably uh, for older fans the most important and significant one. You go back to his AWAs with, days with Nick Bockwinkle. And you think about Nick Bockwinkle. Multiple time AWA world champion. I mean, you looked at Nick Bockwinkle. He was class personified. You looked at a guy in that time frame in the 70s and you're like, if I want somebody to represent my brand, represent my company, even as a heel, even as a villain, Nick Bockwinkle looks like a freaking world champion. He looks like somebody people would pay money to see, even if it was to pay money to see him get beat. And then you take him to a whole different level with his association with Bobby the Brain Heenan. And then eventually, as you get into 83, excuse me, here comes Hulk Hogan back from Hollywood and doing Rocky Three Thunderlips at the very beginning of the roots of Hulkamania. You know, screw what Vince and the propaganda machine of Titan Towers tried to tell you. Hulkamania really started in the AWA. And the story between Hogan and Bockwinkle and Hogan trying to get the AWA World Championship from Bockwinkle and there's the weasel and all of this. Man, incredible stuff. I wish I was old enough to actually remember it. I can only see it via highlights. But throughout his time as he went to the WWF, he was associated with Big John Studd and him and Hogan did some business. King Kong Bundy, that was the main event of WrestleMania too. You had that segue between Bundy and Andre. It was Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff worked as a heel because Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff was associated with and was working with Bobby the Brain Heenan. And as much as we think about WrestleMania three and everything that came afterwards, and I've said it before too, talking about the best, biggest, most important feud in the history of the WWF slash WWF slash WWE was not Austin McMahon, as great as that was and as much business as that did. It did not come through as important or significant to me as Hogan and Andre did. Sure, some of that could be personal bias and time bias and all of that, and that's fine. 
But the one thing I, I don't really do enough job of talking about, and, and that's shame on me, is that as much as we talk about Hogan and Andre, and we talk about how WrestleMania three, they filled that silver dome, screw what Meltzer says, because of that story. You created Survivor Series, the Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, because of the feud between these two guys. In a lot of ways, you could talk about Hogan and Andre, and it was really just a byproduct of a greater feud between Hulk Hogan and Bobby the Brain Heenan. This was a story that went through AWA and carried over to the WWF, and these guys did tremendous business. And you think about that Piper's Pit segment, the first time when Andre walked out and there's Bobby the Brain Heenan. Andre turning heel on Hogan would have worked no matter what. It would have still been a massive event at WrestleMania 3. But all of a sudden, when you injected Bobby the Brain Heenan into that, you injected the weasel into that story, it takes that program to a whole different level. And they did massive business. And I want you to think about the highest rated wrestling segment in television history, or more so the most viewers a wrestling segment ever had, was nothing during the Attitude Era. It was that main event show back in February of 1988, where in front of 33 million people, 33 million people, after you did the Royal Rumble in 88, as in large part to do the contract signing for the rematch between Hogan and Andre with Heenan there, you get to this moment, the main event in February of 88, Hogan and Andre wrestled that match in front of 33 million people on television, and Heenan was there for that. So you one of the biggest WrestleManias of all time, and for years the biggest WrestleMania of all time, and the most watched single WWF slash WWE television segment of all time was in large part due to the history and the feud between Hulk Hogan and Bobby the Brain Heenan. If that doesn't speak to greatness, I don't know what does. But you look at other guys that he was associated with, even when he kind of get past the Hogan stuff. You look at Rick F- Rude, and especially the work that Rude did with Ultimate Warrior. As much as Rude was a talent in and of itself, the best he ever was, the best he ever would be, was his time associated with the Weasel. You look at when they brought in Ric Flair in late 91 and talk about his cheerleading and championing of the real world's champion Ric Flair. And then everybody always talks about the 92 Royal Rumble and how that was the greatest Royal Rumble of all time because it was. And it had the most big-name talent and the biggest stars in one Rumble in history because it did. And it was a great match because it was. The one thing you always gravitate towards is the story that plays out from the time Ric Flair enters in at number three to the point that Ric Flair ultimately wins that undisputed championship at the 92 Royal Rumble. And Bobby Heenan made that match magical for those that watched it. He made it something. He took it to a whole different level in a way that nobody else could have. And I think about WrestleMania 9, as horrid as that show was, him riding out backwards on the camel. Oh my God. <laughs> Think about the commentary team for WrestleMania 9. You had Jim Ross with Savage on one side and Bobby the Brain on the other side. <laughs> if that isn't high comedy and entertainment, I don't know what was. But what so many people really remember about Heenan, and it, 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 it's weird and it's funny in a way, because he did so many great things as a manager, so many great things in terms of actual wrestling. So many people still to this day remember the Bobby Heenan show, and they remember primetime wrestling with him and Gorilla, and Gorilla saying, would you stop it? <laughs> Bobby the Brain Heenan telling the woman with the boa, <laughs> when she says it looks a little ragged, ah, so, so, well, so do you, so what's the difference? I mean, the quick wit that this man had, the sarcasm that he had, the ability he had to make you laugh and curse him in the same breath is really uncanny and really has been unmatched in the history of professional wrestling. You know, and I know a lot of people love WrestleMania 17 so much. One of my favorite things about WrestleMania 17, one of my few things I really liked about that show was the gimmick battle royal where you had Bobby the Brain Heenan and Mean Gene doing the commentary. You enjoy what you want from that show. That's one of my highlights. 
And then WrestleMania 20, when he goes in as part of that Hall of Fame class and his phenomenal speech. And then even when you get the little segment where it's him and Mean Gene making out with Moolah and Mae Young. I mean, you could hear an auto pop in that Madison Square Garden crowd. It's like, this is stupid crap, but that's the weasel, man. How are you not going to like this? And, you know, I look at Bobby the Brain Heenan and I look at a guy that was always determined to do one thing. And that was entertain the fans in whatever way he possibly could, in whatever way was needed, whatever way was best for the business. And when you talk about seminal, important figures in the history of wrestling, I don't know, especially in the case of WWF slash WWE history, I don't know how many more figures are more important than Bobby the Brain Heenan. I really don't. I mean, you could argue in the grand scheme of things, Hogan was a bigger deal. Austin, Rock. Andre, Taker, Vince, that's six. But I mean, if you really, truly want to think about it, for that long, sustained run at the top, for what Bobby Br- the Brain Heenan did to help make so many guys take them to another level, both the guys he was working with and the guys he was working against, for all the stuff he did with Gorilla Monsoon, I mean, he's in the top ten all time in history, throwing a Bruno, obviously of the most important guys in the history of that company. And he hardly ever took a bump. To me, there is no question that he is the greatest manager of all time. And I really don't even understand how that would even be a debate. It just isn't. It's like a similar thing to saying, who's the most successful wrestling promoter of all time? It doesn't matter your opinions about the guy. It doesn't matter whether you like the guy or not. It's Vince McMahon. End of discussion. Well, to me, in a similar way, with a much more positive tone, the greatest professional wrestling manager of all time is Bobby the Brain Heenan. And there's not even an argument or a discussion. And I do believe that most wrestling fans believe that and acknowledge that. And... My last thought here about Heenan is is that it makes you sad when you see somebody like this that was so much a part of your childhood as a wrestling fan. I mean, because he was a major presence in my formative years as a wrestling fan because of the involvement with Hogan, the involvement with Rick Rude and the Ultimate Warrior, Mr. Perfect or Ric Flair, everything he did with Gorilla Monsoon. I mean, he was so critically important to my early development as a wrestling fan. One of those guys that made me a wrestling fan for life, whether I always like it or not. And thank you, Bobby. I hate you for that, Bobby, but I love you for it, Bobby. But it's sad, too, just from a selfish standpoint, because it's yet another person from my childhood that's no longer here. And it's like it takes a piece of your childhood, it rips it away from you. You you think about your own mortality a little bit more. Um, You think about how good things used to be compared to maybe how they are now. And it it gives you some warm, fuzzy feelings, but also makes you feel kind of sad and and kind of regretful that you couldn't go back in the past. But we can't go back in the past. Um, So he'll be missed. There's no question. And there will never, ever be another like him. I don't care what anybody says. There will never, ever be another weasel, another Bobby the Brain Heenan. And I think if there's one thing we can maybe try to take away from all of this and learn from this is let's not wait until these guys pass to let them know how great they are and how much they've meant to us over the years. If there's one thing we could take from all of this outside of how great Heenan is, and like I said, go watch other people's tributes to him. I'm sure they'll do it justice. Go watch old highlights of Heenan and his time as a manager, doing the primetime wrestling with Gorilla Monsoon, the Bobby the he- Bobby Heenan show. Watch all of that. Go buy his two-disc DVD set if you can find it on the internet. Go do all of that. But if you've got a favorite wrestler of all time, favorite manager of all time, favorite athlete of all time, you know, maybe tweet him. Do a video about him if you do videos. And talk about how much you appreciate him, how much you loved him and respect him, how much you cared about him, how much you rooted for him or rooted against him, and how great they were. It shouldn't always take somebody going six foot under for us to prop him up on a pedestal. Bobby the Brain Heenan, there will never ever be another like him. Class personified and the greatest manager of all time.
period.